Well, welcome, friends. December 24th, 2020. A very different kind of Christmas Eve uh, than many of us have ever experienced before. We're so glad that you're able to join us here online as we share this time together. Uh, tonight is our final Advent reading. We're going to sing a few Christmas songs. And can I just say, when we go to sing, uh, feel free to just crank that volume right up on your computer or your TV and sing right along with us. You'll enjoy singing the Christmas carols and you'll have some great musicians to guide you and keep you uh, on key. Uh, let's, uh, let's begin our time together with just a brief prayer, shall we? Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. We've been ramping up this month remembering this incredible gift through the season of Advent. And we are so glad to now be remembering Christ's first coming and also to be anticipating his second coming. And so, Lord, as we celebrate this Christmas Eve, we invite you to come by your Spirit. Help us to worship you. And then help us to look beyond the cradle to the grave and to the resurrection that we might catch a glimpse of your amazing love for your children. That we might be able to hang on ourselves in this difficult season to the truth of your word that reminds us that you are for us and that you love us. We celebrate this time together we pray all of these things in the name of Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, we're going to sing a song and invite you to join with us. Through the glowing skies they come with me. 
Thanks for joining us in that opening song. It's a great Christmas carol. On the eve of our Christmas celebration, Jesus' birthday, uh, we light all of the candles of our Advent wreath. So we're going to do that now. First, we light the candle of hope because, in fact, Jesus is our source of hope. And then secondly, we light the candle of peace because peace comes through Christ to us. And then third, we light the candle of joy. Jesus is the joy of our salvation. And then fourth, we light the candle of love. Love made manifest by God the Father in giving us his son, Jesus. Finally, we light the Christ candle. Jesus is born. Jesus has come. Jesus is our salvation. Paul stated it this way in Galatians chapter 4. But when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. Because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And since you are a son, God has made you also an heir. Let's pray together. Our great God, we thank you now for the light of that special star over 2,000 years ago that guided humble shepherds and learned wise men to the holy baby. Lead us now by the light of your love that we also may follow you to new life in him in celebration of the birthday of our King and our Savior, in whose name we pray, even Jesus. Amen. Friends, join us as we sing again. So come on, come in,
sing rejoice.
Come on, let's hail the king. Let's sing that again. Hail the heaven-born prince of peace. Hail the son of righteousness. Sing that again. Hail the heaven-born prince of peace. Hail the son. Come on, we're going to sing that to the Lord tonight. Hail the
They declare things like, Hail the heaven-born Prince of King, Peace. Hail the Son of Righteousness. Light and life he brings. Come on, Matthew. 
lace. And my dear lace is glory by born that man no more may die. Born to raise each child of earth, born to give them second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to Hark the herald. Well, thank you for that great singing. Glory to the newborn king indeed. Friends, it's that time in our service where we give one another an opportunity to uh, joyfully give back to the Lord a little bit of that with which he's blessed us. And I just want to say this Christmas Eve, way to go, Valley View. Thank you so much for your faithfulness this year. Who could have predicted we'd be in a, a global pandemic, that we'd be locked out of our church for months on end, and yet... Uh, you have, even though we've been paying rent and not occupying the facility, you've been continuing to support us and enable our ministry to get online and be broadcast regularly, uh, which has made this second lockdown so much easier on everyone. Uh, so thank you for your generosity. Let's pray together. Father, I am so grateful. We are so grateful to be part of a, a church family that is so generous. We bless you. We thank you for the privilege of giving and we give with joyful hearts because of your great love for us. You gave first and it compels us to want to give back to you. So we give you this offering and ask that you will bless it and multiply it. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Friends, you can jump online and uh, jump on vvac.ca slash give or go to giving at BVAC and contribute that way. God bless you as you give your Christmas offering. Well, let's pray again together just briefly. Lord, thank you for the time you give us now to open your word together. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear and courage to respond in obedience. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, friends, uh, isn't this Christmas just weird? Uh, I mean, come on. Lockdown. Pandemic. I read a post this week that struck a nerve for me, and it simply said this, who would have ever believed a year ago that we could be smoking pot, meeting with family at the Christmas table, and that the illegal part of that would be the meeting with family? Now, quick disclaimer, I am not a pot smoker, but you get the point of that post, don't you? Uh, you have to admit, this is a really weird Christmas. But what if, what if this really weird Christmas actually reflects more of the original Christmas and more fully than any Christmas in our recent history? A longtime acquaintance of mine wrote a post recently that has been sinking in and uh, it's caused me to reflect deeply. It's brief, 
but it's really good. So I want to read it to you and then just reflect a little bit on it from scripture. It's called The Unorthodoxy of God uh, by my friend Harvey Michalis. The Unorthodoxy of God, a Christmas reflection. Harvey serves in our National Ministry Center uh, of the Christian Missionary Alliance in Canada. His reflection goes this way. Aha, Christmas. We love the traditional story, but the backstory gives a glimpse into the origins of this faith. And it says anything but traditional. God reveals his unorthodox ways of working with humanity to make his presence known. Here is where the real wonder of the Christmas story lies. He does far more than our personal God box will allow him to do. Jesus comes out of a traditional Jewish culture and religious heritage. While there are clear connections to that lineage, God fulfills prophecies about Jesus's entrance into the world. The tradition ends there. Think about just a few things from the Christian narrative of Christmas. Uh, to ensure Jesus was born into a family, Joseph was led to step away from his own Jewish traditions and male rights and to not divorce Mary. Further, outside of his tradition, he also was prompted to believe the sexual history story of Mary a rarity in any culture, in any day, and an outsider move on Joseph's part. Then God led some Zoroastrian practitioners, that is the Magi, via their astrology and their religion, religion's belief in a single wise God to follow their inner astrological prompts to meet a person who was born a king. They didn't know the God of the Jews. They weren't connected to that orthodoxy, but clearly God knew them and spoke to them through what we might label as their pagan practices. God does what he does to draw people into his kingdom and to accomplish what he desires. He used angels to convince a Jewish guy to abandon his traditions. He prompted people with no understanding of the orthodoxy that we might believe to not only hear him, but obey. God comes to all of us. The starting place doesn't matter. And neither does any connection to a set of truths. He's coming right into your personal neighborhood of thought, belief, and circumstances. And to me, that's the great wonder of the season. So look, listen, he's calling you. That's a great post from my friend Harvey. I love his statement. God does what he does to draw people into his kingdom and to accomplish what he desires. Let's just pick up that birth narrative uh, just briefly in Matthew's gospel and see these events in scripture. God does what he does. I'm in Matthew chapter one, verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah came about. His mother, Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her public to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took Mary home as his wife. But he did not cons consummate their marriage until she gave birth to his son, and he gave him the name Jesus. And then in chapter 2, we pick it up again. And after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, 
during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who's been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. We pick it up again in chapter, in chapter two, verse nine. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and they worshiped him. And then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. What a great story. What a great story. God prompted people with no understanding of the orthodoxy that we might believe is important to not only hear him, but obey. This is unprecedented season for us when our own personal traditions simply cannot be safely or legally lived out. Could it be that in this season, God will call us beyond what is a known part of our neighborhood of thought, of our belief and circumstances in order to speak to others. Others who would not normally be part of our celebrations. To hear for the first time perhaps, and perhaps in an unorthodox way, that God is coming into their world and that he comes to us all. He called shepherds. Some of the most avoided and unwelcomed segment of the population back then. And God invited them to go find the baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Mary's housemates in the delivery ward were not other expectant mothers, but rather barnyard animals. A far cry from the opulent birthing room of any other king. How can this be the appropriate arrival for the king of the Jews? But you know what? I think our Western society with all our sterile procedures and finely tuned birthing rooms, we've got nothing on that stable. For there in that stable, God came near. And he came near in the most unbecoming way. Well, perhaps it may have been in part because he was demonstrating to the world that this Messiah would be different. He would be a mold breaker. This Messiah would not conform to the traditional orthodoxy. His people knew and experienced. He would break that mold and do what he does to draw people into his kingdom and to accomplish what he desires. They were experiencing a king who would ride in military, or sorry, they were expecting a king who would ride in military strength and overthrow the Romans and their overbearing structures. Well, he overcame their overbearing structures, all right, but he did much more. They expected a king who would demand loyalty and followership and devotion to the death. But he came and taught them to obey the authorities and pay to Caesar what was his and pay God what was his. And they never expected a king who would willingly lay down his life, his own life, for his people. That anyone who received him by faith might be called the children of God. But in this way, Jesus demonstrated the greatest love anyone could demonstrate. And he was, as he served his people, he then turned and said, now I've shown you the most excellent way. Go and do likewise, serve one another. I wonder how Christ's unorthodox love will be demonstrated through our people, the people of Valley View this week. Will Will walls of bitterness and anger be torn down? Will forgiveness flow like great wine at a feast? Will humility finally overcome the sarcasm at the family table this year? Smaller though it may be. Will conversations be void of the traditional trimmings and instead engage hearts and minds in understanding and learning 
and leaning in to hear the voice of God as we speak of true peace on earth and goodwill to men. Friends, listen now. We've all had more than enough traditional Christmases focusing on self and our own. What if it's time to make a departure from that which we've known and experienced in this new season, in this unusual, weird Christmas? What if it's time for us to listen to the voice of God as he leads us into new uncharted areas of obedience and speaking of his love to our hurting and lonely neighbors? It's of interest to me that the only one, the only one permitted gathering this Christmas is for a family to include a single person living on their own into the midst of their family unit for Christmas meal. Imagine what it could look like if from the families around the Valley View Alliance Church community, there wasn't one person eating Christmas alone this Christmas day. What if we were able to reach out and invite just one single person to join us at our table safely, respectfully, uh, social distancing appropriately, but making God known in the unorthodox to our culture means of hospitality. It doesn't have to be Christmas Day. It could be any day this week. But this Christmas, friends, God has come near, albeit in an unorthodox way, a lockdown in our own home. Could it be that this is part of his plan to give us opportunity to practice hospitality and thereby live out the love of Christ this Christmas to our neighbors? Perhaps our hospitality could be someone else's God came near moment. And God came near in an unorthodox way. And that's someone who we invite, who has no concept yet that they're loved by God, may be invited into the kingdom. And you say, well, they won't accept the invitation. Can I tell you the wise men accepted the invitation? Can I tell you the shepherds accepted the invitation? Joseph accepted the invitation and Mary accepted the invitation. Harvey said something profound in his uh, his post. He said, God comes to all of us. The starting place doesn't matter and neither does any connection to a set of truths. He's coming right into your personal neighborhood of thought, belief, and circumstances. Oh, friends, what if, what if this Christmas, our invitation for one another to join us for dinner this week is the starting place for someone to discover the God who came near? What do we got to lose? Our traditions, they're gone already. Create something new. Let Jesus create something new in and through us for someone else's benefit. Beats getting busted for having the whole family at the table. Merry Christmas. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that you are the God who does what you do to draw people to yourself and accomplish what you will. And thanks, Lord, that we are invited into your work to share in the love of Christ toward our neighbors. God, before our invitations, go by your spirit and prepare the hearts of those we would invite to have a meal with us this week. The lonely neighbors who are on their own, who can't be with family, for the sake of their hearts and souls, go before us and prepare their heart and then bring them into our homes that we might fellowship with them and be able to share the good news that God came near in the form of Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Friends, we're going to sing uh, one more concluding song. So join us as we sing.
thank you for enjoying that last song with us. Indeed, it is a holy night. Friends, I just want to say thanks for uh, being with us this evening and join our Christmas service together. My benediction is simple. Go in peace, sin no more. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Merry Christmas.